Lovely morning, everybody. Welcome back in another video. In our video for today, we will discuss IELTS writing. This is something that is causing a lot of hassle and problems to a lot of test takers in um, Middle East, probably speakers of English as a second language. One potential reason for that is that their lack of extensive reading. So people in the Middle East on average read probably less than a book per month, which is considerably low amount of reading to become a good writer. It's a matter of input and output, actually. So the less input you get from reading, the worse output you get from writing. Technically speaking, we call that garbage in, garbage out. So the more, you, which is um, a technical word or technical expression among um, software engineers. Um, so the idea of writing comes from the fact of your extensive reading, but since we do not have shortcut to um, increase your reading, we always recommend to, to follow the uh, day tours by finding simulation um, of some of the best essays that were written in, in IELTS, and those test uh, takers have given us a lot of feedback about what you should do and what you should not do for writing. So principally speaking, uh, there are four criteria on which writing, um, on which writing committee, um, on which test takers are assessed by IELTS committee of test administrators. And these four criteria are task achievement, cohesion and coherence, lexical diversity, and grammar or what we call grammatical range. What do we mean by task achievement? Task achievement is checking whether you have accomplished the task by answering and addressing in details the question that was assigned to you or not. So a question that looks like this, when a person spends most of his or her time working a job with little job satisfaction, their life loses meaning. To what extent do you agree or disagree? So this is a typical question that is being asked in the independent writing of IELTS and you're required to write between 250 to 300 words to this sample question. You need to make sure that you address fully or almost fully the question by providing details and examples and uh, narrative that comes from your experience. But this comes with the expense of diversifying and uh, creating a sequence, a logical sequence of the events when you're creating that narrative in writing. Writing is different from um, speaking in terms of the way you communicate with the readers. You're dealing with a blind reader because readers don't see you, they don't see your eye contact, they don't see your voice, they don't see your body gestures. So all of that is restricted. The only thing that is left is verbs, nouns, adjectives, and adverbs. So how can you make sure that the list of grammar is fully used and fully functional to deliver the image or the picture? Let me give you an example here. Writing to readers is like drawing this painting. Now, what is the analogy of this painting and how is it related to writing? When you write, you need to provide um, a colorful image in the mind of the reader because we think in colors, we think in ideas. We don't think of objects, we think of words. So when, when somebody talks, they always think of words. So when I say, for example, an elephant, you'll think of something that is massive, that is enormous, that is big. So these are the kind of adjectives that are usually associated uh, well, adjective-wise, with the ver with the noun elephant, so it's it's this kind of analogy. When so when you're writing, you need to work the work and the craft of a painter. You need to draw an image in the mind of the reader. So you're you're um, you're a painter um, per se, and uh, you, what what are you doing? You're just drawing colorful image. So. Instead of saying a painting, we say a yellow marshes painting. So we are adding a little bit of de depiction here. We are adding a little bit of description here to the list 
of uh, details that we are adding. So it's a matter of details. It's a matter of logical sequence. It's a matter of your perspective. It's a matter of logicality and sequence and cohesion and coherence, the connectedness among sentences and the connectedness among paragraphs. This is what we call, technically speaking, grammar and linguistics, cohesion and coherence. So this is the analogy that I am talking about here. We are probably not seeing the whole picture because I'm using a very uh, uh, limited lens. Um, so it's not showing the whole picture here, but you get the idea, right? This is what I mean when I say a writer should be a painter. You need to always provide enough depiction uh, to the reader when you're writing. Now, some people might say, well, if I don't have enough vocabulary, why? how am I supposed to provide that kind of depiction. Well, first of all, if you're not having enough vocabulary, you should get prepared because nobody goes to IELTS and take it for granted that he's gonna get 7.5 or eight or nine band score. No, it takes a lot of experience. It takes a lot of practice. It takes a lot of effort. We always say success is 99 perspiration and 1% inspiration. Perspiration and inspiration. There's a big dichotomy there. Probably this video can be considered for the intermediate and the, uh, and the upper intermediate and the advanced level. So this kind of speech is geared towards those people because those people are the ones who are eligible to take the test. It is not easy to consider the fact that uh, you go there with very limited access to vocabulary. You're not having that kind of maneuverability to take the test and you take it. You're gonna be very disappointed because you need to develop your speaking skills, you need to develop your writing skills, you need to develop your reading skills, and above all, you need to develop your listening skills because once you get used to how people talk, analyze that critically, you're gonna get to a point of satisfaction with your speaking, with your writing. So it's a matter again of input and output, going back to square number one. Mastery of phrasal verbs, mastery of tenses, you need to show you're selling yourself to the reader, which is in the test administration committee. You need to show them the mastery that you have of English tenses. So you, you have to have a good grammatical range. And this is one of the criteria. It is probably the most important criterion in the committee assessment of the test takers in IELTS. I have seen a lot of Chinese speakers, Chinese citizens who took IELTS and TOEFL, and they had very limited speaking skills, but when they took the IELTS test and the TOEFL test, they got very high score. The reason for that, they were following the tips and recommendations of how to take IELTS and score and get higher professional um, result. And they follow exactly what the committee wants to see. So if you take that kind of test, you need to make sure that you know what the committee wants to see in your test, take, uh, test paper. Now, one of the things that the committee wants to see is probably, well, not probably, but exactly a good task achievement in the paragraph. And uh, I'll pull um, a sample of a very weak written sample in writing because our topic is in is related and relevant to writing. So we are within that circumference of discussion. And I'll show you an example of a very high level. Uh, they got 7.5. So we got two samples here. The first sample is the one that you look at here right now. And this is a sample uh, that is relatively weak. It got 5.5. So if you can and believe you can write better than this version, I absolutely recommend you do a little bit more practice to improve your handwriting because you're gonna write it down. You're not gonna type it up. And this is another example where the, the test taker has gotten uh, around 7.5 in the IELTS according to British Council. And the reason they got that is because they showed, they sold themselves as good writers when it comes to uh, task achievement, when it comes to cohesion and coherence, when it comes to lexical diversity, and when it comes to grammatical range. These are the four criteria by which the test takers are assessed in literally writing. But they are kind of like identical when it comes to speaking because both of these skills are productive skills. You need to do something we call in engineering reverse engineering. 
reverse engineering is you have to uh, decompose the uh, the essay that was written in IELTS and see where the weaknesses are. Do a simulation of similar essays that were written before and write down three or four drafts and check them by yourself or give them to somebody who is one of your kinship or acquaintance and have them assess your writing. They should be at least professional in English so they can give you a very good eagle's eye perspective on what's wrong and what's right in your writing and how you can sequence it in a logical order that grabs the attention, that has a statement in the beginning, that has fully fledged body and that has a very good conclusive marks. In addition to that, you need to make sure you take care of the sequence order of events by using indicative words for that. So in the beginning, in the first hand, the second hand, furthermore, moreover, additionally, in addition to that, to sum up in conclusion, these are grammatical markers that show a logical sequence and also a grammatical sequence. So the reader transitions from one station, one compartment, and that train of thought to the next compartment. In that way, you would have been accomplished a very good successful writing sample that will guarantee you a very higher score in IELTS. These are the recommendations that I have for you today. Please listen to the video again, subscribe to the channel, try to listen extensively to a lot of tutorials that are available online for that part particularly. Don't multitask when, you, when it comes to writing training or reading training or um, speaking training. Try to sequence the training. So first week, focus on the listening. For second week, focus on reading. These receptive skills are going to be empowered and boosted. So that will ultimately improve your productive skills of writing and speaking. Do that sequence of order and I guarantee you that you're gonna get a very higher score in IELTS. Last thing, try to master idiomatic expressions, use them carefully, and try to master phrasal verbs. They are essential to show that there is a good approximation of your English to the English of native speakers. Enjoy your day and have a lovely day. مع السلامة مدرب اللغة وليد خالد